Okay, all right. Let me just go ahead. I know it's about 30 seconds, like a little bit earlier right here, but just because I'm going to begin talking about Friday's quiz for Americana. Okay, like that. So, and I know people want to probably take some things down for this to let you know what to prepare for. So it can help you, you know, so you're not like, you know, all over the place. Make sure you read the chapters. You can read and take notes along as you go along with it. Some of you are seeing that it's a, it's a review. You're like, oh, I already know this. I already know this. Well, it should reinforce some things. So first thing is my first warning is this, is that when you answer questions on Friday, it has to be answers according to the book Americana. Some of you are going to think that like, oh, well, I don't have to read Empire Well. I have to read Americana. I can just answer in a general way. Hey, tobacco, it was great. John Rolfe, like that, you know, it's a cash crop. I'm like, that's not according to the book of Americana how that you should respond. That's usually when I take points off. That like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I already know. It's general knowledge. I'm going to, on top of the quiz, says answer according to to the readings in Americana. That's the disclaimer. On that note, I'll go now and say some things here I think that you can look at from each chapter that will help you. I'll try to guide to get the, uh, you know, quiz. Now, I think Layla asked before, like, what is, like, you know, what's the format? Uh, it's going to be a, a mixture of probably some multiple choice and short answer in a way like that. Short uh, and also to maybe you need to kind of explain some things that as you're going to see here with the guide I'm going to give you. All right. Good. All right. So yeah, you guys are in there. All right. So anyway, number one, chapter one, venture. Like what are the advantages of the way the English settles North America through joint stock companies? I'll say it again. Advantages of the way English settles North America through the joint stock companies. I think the first two or three pages, he kind of goes along about why, like, you know, it's better for the companies. And I know some of you guys know general knowledge of that, but he says some things in those first two or three pages, specifically why those joint stock companies were an advantage for English settlement in North America. And that might even be the first question, might be. And you have to just kind of, what? Like that, and, and that you would have to explain it that way. Some people are going to be like, oh, yeah, well, I don't need to read it now. Or I'll just skip through. It's, your answers are going to be disjointed, and you're gonna, I'm going to take points off, okay, like that. So, all right, it's, I, I know everybody, times I give hints like this, oh, yeah, I, that's my shortcut way. I'll just follow along there. Okay, second thing on Chapter 1, challenges of the Plymouth Colony. I might say what are two challenges, what were two challenges of Plymouth Colony, what are some of the things they were going through according to the book, Americana. Yeah. So that's really and you have a question? Yeah. Go ahead. So um, ahead. when I was in chapter one, I was really confused on the comparison of so they so they went they fled from where to the Dutch or to Holland? Yes. Yes, at first and everything like that. And they went from Holland to England. Back to England because they said they were feeling a little bit like, you know, again, that they were losing their religion in a way and that the Dutch were not like the Protestants they wanted to be. You get it? Right. Right, exactly. So that is not. But again, they they're specifically in there he talks about that and it goes back and that's when they decide like, you know, to gather together the captives to uh, leave on the Mayflower. Also on that, and this is going to be really the pattern of most chapters, and I'm going to kind of worried about giving you this kind of hint, is page 17. Usually I like the last two pages of each chapter. All right, so you're going to see, I'm going to say all the pages on here about that. And some of you I know, probably not, any of you guys in here, ladies in here, you're not going to do this. You're going to think like, well, I'll just read it like the last two pages. That's going to give me the whole thing. You really have to kind of understand what he's summing up for like each chapter. All right. But it's pretty important. Two, tobacco. All right. So this chapter. 
pluses and minuses of growing tobacco in the Chesapeake area. And again, because you have a car, you may be able to put some like, you know, advantages from the book that you see in there, or you see some minuses of growing tobacco in the Chesapeake area. Can you mention the American Honda Series? Will we be no car numbers? Um, no, not really, unless I specifically really give you a hint in there like that. So, uh, uh, sometimes what I'll do is say like, you know, because I give you some of the page numbers, like, well, what are the advantages of, you know, what, how did, why was cotton a cash crop? And, you know, he gives you some specifics in a way, you know, again, because some of what some of you guys are going to do is say, oh, cotton's a cash crop. We're able to sell a lot of cotton. Well, anybody can answer that. All right. That's not saying that it's from the book. All right, that's why you have that four by six card to kind of put some things down there. On tobacco, indentured servitude versus slavery. Right, like what is like, you know, advantages, disadvantages, like again, for having an indentured servitude versus slavery. Along with that, the evolution of indentured servitude to slavery, finally, where they do kind of convert uh, on there. And I don't know if he even mentions Bacon's Rebellion. Okay, so which is good, all right, very good, like that. So, so he, but he really talks about like how eventually in the late, like you know, later half of the kind of like you know, uh, 17th, 18th century is like you know, they're, they're kind of coming convinced more with slavery, all right. And Lord Proprietors of Carolina incentives for immigration settlement. Just the proprietors of Carolina, what kind of incentives they have for to settle in Carolina, all right? What were their incentives that they were offering? All right, so in there. Well, why, what were they saying to make Carolina like, you know, again, enticing? And then he says it in there. Some of you guys have already read, you already know what I'm talking about. So you just start to highlight that. And this is kind of a big one because I like this, and this is something that's really good. That I know this is going to be on there for sure. It's tobacco's effect on Southern society and politics. The development, because one thing about AP U.S. history is continuity and change over time. Why is it that we're going to be fighting the Civil War? Because it really starts with tobacco with cash cropping it changes the tier the hierarchy of society and he goes along in there and that's why this book is so great it's very succinct it's easy to read and you can kind of use oh we already know this well do you i say it's good reinforcement and that's where you have it you know may 8 should be kind of easy for you in a way like oh we're overstudied we're over prepared that's my goal and that's what all the students usually say all right great now go to, t uh, oh, by the way, page 29, because I like the summation of like, you know, tobacco. All right, chapter three, taxes. I like pages 30 through 31, kind of beginning pages about what's going on with taxes. I love Franklin's response to external taxes. Who knows, am I even, you don't have to like copy the quote down. I might put the quote on the quiz that what his response was. And maybe you need to explain it or maybe I'll have a multiple choice off of that. Is that the response to external taxes? Yeah, there's a quote in there. You'll okay. see. External. All right. The Americana's explanation of the Boston Tea Party because you get details again about well what exactly happened where that they, they boarded that ship and why were they staying there, you know? Yes. And I love this one. How was Virginia affected by what was going on in Massachusetts? How was Virginia? Because you makes you think like, well, why would the colonies get together like, you know? First Continental Congress, you know, because I mean, it seemed like it just affected Massachusetts. Uh, and there's a First Continental Congress. They actually borrowed some stuff from Patrick Henry. It's actually this kind of a summary view and the rights of the rights of British America or in the rights of British America. A summary view. It's 
in italics, it's in the chapter in the First Continental Congress. A summary view in the rights of British America. You'll see it. In page 45. Oh, Mr. Price, it's almost great. To, well, I'm not going to say everything. You're going to have to, like, Again, your card, I know what some of you're going to do. You're going to get off, like, you know, your pen. You're going to get your, like, you know, your little, like, you know, microscope out. Start, like, you know, that's an eye, like that, and everything. There, that's, that's not what you should be doing if I'm giving you these things. You should pick and choose. Like, well, I kind of understand that. There's some specific things that I need to write down that he gave hints on because I keep forgetting it. Or some details. That's what this, the point is of all this. It's not like, oh, I've got everything now. I'm going to transfer every sentence that he talked about in his, on this card. Like, again, in, you know, point three font. You know, like that, you know. So, and, and, you know, it's got to be handwritten front and back. Go ahead. Most likely, because okay. I, I don't, I don't I, there, there's no use of killing you. Like yeah. again, in there, the, the, the base thing is learning. Yeah. Again, some of your classmates again are gonna like, you know, hear these hands and they're like, oh, I don't have to read now. Let me just go to the last pages. Let oh. me copy your card. <laughs> that's and again, copying the card that's gonna go on and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, and it's just, you know, you just <laughs> lose the effect of that. Uh, I've had. You know, I've had some of your classmates, and you're going to see this sometimes, they come in on Friday with no card. I said, you don't even have to take the quiz. Like, uh, like saying, I didn't, and I didn't even fail them. I said, you don't deserve to take this quiz. You don't deserve it because, like, again, you should have something written down, all right? Anybody, Einstein would have a card. <laughs> oh, but it's Einstein because he has it up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's other kids too and everything because they like, you know, they can't write that. Could you write down? I don't know. Write down something? I don't know. So, anyway. um, So, that's that. And then page 45, I say for chapter 3. And, and the, the last one. Uh, significance of James Watt, chapter 4. My favorite title, Cotton. Anyway. James Watt, which you already know from Steam Power. So. Yes. Like. And you should know the next guy because he's the father of capitalism. It's Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations. You have to know him, Adam Smith. James, James Watt, Adam Smith. Significance of James Watt, Adam Smith, writing The Wealth of Nations. The transition from rice and indigo to cotton. I actually, I think there's a sentence or two where he talks about why is that and what's the impact of that. From indigo to cotton, huh? Rice and indigo. Rice and indigo to cotton. Like, why was there a transition from that? Because you know that that's the southern cash cross. What you have to understand why does it start going to cotton? Why do we go from tobacco to cotton? Like, again, like that, you know. So, what is that? And why did rice and indigo, like, again, why, why did we get in this transition? And why did it become king? And um, why didn't Eli Whitney get rich from his invention? I'm not going to name that invention. All right. Why didn't Eli get rich from his invention? And what made him the most money? So this is pretty specific. What made him the most money in the end? Why didn't he get rich? He did not he did not he did not get rich from his that invention. So go ahead, keep mentioning that name that you've learned from the first grade. Amy an invention from the early nineteenth century. Oh, it's right, it's cotton gin. Market revolution. Why is again like name me some uh, advancements? The cotton gin. Why did cotton increase? The cotton gin, Mr. Price. <laughs> I'm just so sick of teaching for 20 years. That's the only thing that you've the learned since kindergarten. I I think so. That and Hitler's bad, and he killed the Jews. <laughs> you know that from first grade, seriously. Like that. I mean, it's it's funny how what you absorb in there. 
Like that, 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 that too. I mean, there's just, just things that are just so elementary, literally. It's just so easy, and it's kind of, it's almost you learn it, almost not even from school, just from everywhere and, and anytime that that's, you know, that's what you know. All right. Uh, and also pages 56 and 57. All right. And then we'll transition to like tomorrow's quiz. Hey, yeah, we'll go on tomorrow's one. But that is that in a way. I think you fought. Now, again, my warning to you, because you only have so much space on the card, um, that I would not just be trying to like, you know, come up with your like, you know, oh, you write so small. Help me out. Let's like, again, everything like that, you know, on there. Pick and choose what you think that like maybe that you're you're kind of uh, on there. And I said for a couple things for sure that I probably would have something on there. All right. So mo if you do good, pretty good on your card, you'll probably do pretty good on this particular quiz for sure. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Let let me continue on here. You're wasting time here. So what I also want to say is that like when you um that probably. I might have two to three quizzes, depending on the quarter. It may count as a test, like all three averages of these three quizzes for this book, or it might just be two quizzes that count, and I take the average of those two quiz grades that count as a test grade. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. All right, because the time is going on. All right, now, tomorrow, quiz number eight, Adams and Jefferson, all right? So Adams and Jefferson, we don't even get to the rest of the uh, chapter eight kind of things here with you know, uh, Mr. Madison. All right, that'll be on Tuesday. Please watch that video on Lewis and Clark. Maybe you don't, it's, it's, that one tends to be a little bit longer. Maybe you don't have to do all of it. I have a feeling that maybe because I'm checking on people, they, they are watching or listening to it like that. Now, might be some kind of specific question on that. So just be very aware of that. All right, so that we are like looking at those, uh, uh of what's going on. Okay. All right, and definitely for Tuesday too, to, uh, to come to one that updated, that definitely will be on because you know I, I have a personal bias for to come to the Native Americans and everything that they stood for. All right, so Adams get in the office. Here's the main big idea that's kind of like, you know, in there that's kind of more deep thought that's like, you know, in there. What's his biggest problem? Following who? It's a no win situation. Whoever follows Bill Belichick will not do good, no matter what he does. All right, there's not it's it's a no win situation. All right, oh they're gonna say well New England went like you know like you know they they had a pretty good season twelve and four well but they didn't win the Super Bowl like that you know I mean there's nothing that John Adams is gonna be able to do no matter what it is he's gonna be able to keep the peace. Because Washington is such a celebrity at the time, so great. We still revere him hundreds of years later. Can you imagine at the time? You know? So, always criticism from both sides, from the Federalists of Hamilton, from the Federalists of Hamilton, and. Huh? Yes, I, I think she is. I think she's back there. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So Hamilton and, um, you know, and of course, the Jeffersonian Republicans. By the way, Jefferson is what in his, from this election? Is vice president because he's second runner up, like in the student council elections, is the vice president. Okay. And so, and he's basically telling Adams at the beginning of his administration, well, you know what? I think I'm just going to go back to Monticello and chill. And Adams is not Federalist enough, according to Hamilton. Hamilton and who, what does Adams do because he has a good heart? I'll keep George Washington's men, like, you don't have to know the names, Timothy Pickering, McHenry, but they're high Federalists. What do you think high Federalist means? Not only a Federalist, but you're kind of a high Federalist. Really, really aggressive, really extreme. So that's again on there. Like you, we have like, you know, ultra conservative today, like, you know, you're right wing, but you're ultra, so they're very high, and they're right there bearing down on Adams, like, you know, war, war, war against France, war. So Adams personality, they call him, they say, chip off the old Plymouth rock. All right. Principle and Puritan. All right. See. Principle and Puritan.
So some people say he's bipolar. I mean, like, you know, again, he's, you know, again, he's very affable. He's very plumb, meaning very confident, but he's also very reactive and he can get very like, you know, again, emotional too. It's portrayed in the videos that you guys see. And we'll see more of that tomorrow with Alex. Right? How I can get a little bit, you know, kind of, uh, you know, stressed out and like again and very frustrated with people all right so we will go through the the kind of like xyz affair to quasi war because he's president at 1797 already france has sent back one of our emissaries this is not xyz yet you get it france is like what is the french upset about from 1794 and 1795 what are they upset about what did go ahead Jay's tree, like there you go, you sneaky backstabbing hillbilly bastards. Like again, we help you win the war, and now you up here breaking our treaty, like that in this time and stuff, and you're not helping us against your foe, your natural enemy, Great Britain. We don't even want to receive this emissary. Uh, you know, it's Charles Coke or Pickney's like say send them back. So Adams is already thinking that. But what is Adam's advice to Washington from the video from the beginning from yesterday? I think some people saw it from third period. What was his advice to Washington? Stay neutral, right, like that. So he's already got that in his brain. So he says, all right, let me send three other people. Like saying, you don't have to know their names, but you know there's some all-stars in there with John Marshall, like that, that's in there. Charles Coteworth Pickney, again, from South Carolina, and Elbridge Gary. I know in all the videos, they don't call him Jerry because they that fits with gerrymandering like that and everything. You can just send them over. They go over there. I know what they, all the stuff that you learn, especially like, you know, they had shortcut it. They're not immediately met by these, you know, French, you know, like, you know, go-betweens and middlemen and everything. They're already negotiating. Well, here's the problem. The French are already saying, wait here. We'll talk to you there. Once again, uh, you'll see Charles Talleyrand for 15 minutes. They do like that. You know, they're not really getting anywhere. That's why I want you to get the picture up. So, you know this story now. Then they're approached by people. The reason why it's X, Y, and Z is because once the Republicans hear about what's going on, they want to know the truth. And John Adams releases it, but he protects the French like, you know, emissaries and calls them X, Y, Z. Just, just for FYI, okay? But here's the thing. Is, to get some correct kind of, like, numbers here. They say, well, look, you know, you guys are doing pretty good, but to see Charles Taylor and Lysa again, everything, we need $250,000, like that, like just up front. And that's usually not very, you know, like, okay, we understand this, how this goes along and like that. But then $10 million in loans, and John Marshall, as you're going to see, as you already know, he really takes offense to this, like that. You know, you're really trying to extort us. You know, you're really trying to take advantage of the situation here. And all we want to do is keep peace. What are the French doing? Well, mainly it's in the West Indies, to say that, attacking American ships. And so, and they want to kind of resolve this. Go ahead, honey. I'm sorry. First, they needed two hundred fifty thousand dollars in it right here to just even see Charles Talleyrand once again. So, being the right now the acting somewhat prime minister here in France, you know, just to see him. Yes. Okay. All right. From 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 seventeen ninety seven. To 1809. Remember the odd years is when the presidents like come in and they leave. That's why it seems kind of like kind of you say, well, the election next is next year, 2020, but technically the next president is not until 2021. They come in office. That's why it gets kind of like back and forth. Like that. That's a good question. Okay. Now let's get back. Let's you know try to finish this up. So it's you know Hamilton. You know he's saying war, war, war war and adams is saying like yes we can prepare but we're not actually going to ask for official declaration war they even in congress say hey 
1798, let's get rid of the Treaty of Alliance. And they do in America in the Congress. They got rid of it. They said, like, that. it's no longer, like, you know, again, like, we're going to be a part of this Treaty of Alliance. John Adams does what? He builds up the Navy, resurrects the Marines on here. But he keeps one of the diplomats over there, Gary, to keep negotiating. By the way, the French are saying, like, if he doesn't stay over here, we're going to go to war and get in the way. So it's kind of like that. So he continues to hold out. Now, this makes him very popular at home. All right, and he's never been this popular because they think he's going to go to war. And anytime we think we're going to get attacked by an enemy, just thinking about today is 9 11, we get very nationalistic and patriotic. All right, so we get very supportive. Yes? What year uh, did he get rid of the Treaty of Alliance? 1798. It's not him. He does not do that. That's Congress. He does not do that. Mm, so. so. You have that at this time, so now we're in it with this build up, with ourselves building up defenses, we're in the quasi war. All right, so from 1798 to about 1800, so about two and a half years. Finally, you know, you get, you know, um, with Napoleon coming into the directory in 1799. He's kind of more like a sta uh, stable factor for the most part in France and saying, look, this is not the time that our real enemies are Great Britain. This is not the time, Mr. Talleyrand, to be making like enemies with America. Just like Franklin Roosevelt said, you know, or Lincoln said, I'm sorry, during the Civil War, like, again, you know, you know, one enemy at a time, you know, like when does, you know, all of a sudden the Northerners says, oh, we should go to war against Britain. He's like, well, we're fighting the South right now. One enemy at a time. That's when Napoleon is saying, let's get peace. And so it's called two things here. And you see it sometimes on your quiz to convention of 1800 convention. You're like, what do you mean? They all meet? Not in a way. Or the treaty of Morfontaine. I'm not going to ask to spell that. You look it up. The treaty of Morfontaine or the Convention of 1800. You can see either one of those tomorrow, all right? That resolves this. Yeah. It says they're not going to attack American vessels in the West Indies. We, You don't have to, they've already kind of got rid of it, you know, honor the Treaty of Alliance. So who are the Americans that The French, because this is the French now. This is for us versus the French. Now this happens in, no, he gets John Marshall gets this kind of agreement in November of 1800. What do you know what happens in the November of 1800 election? It's almost too late for Adams at this time to say, Hey, I got the peace that ever I've been kind of pursuing all this time. You know, it's a little bit too late this time. And of course, the Democrat Republicans are saying that, like, you know, it's you know, he never was really truthful about everything. Hamilton is saying that, like, you should have, like, you know, we raised an army. Washington was going to run it. I had the uniforms made and, you know, you never did use us. We're going to have to fight them eventually anyway. They're predicting, they're predicting that it's going to cause much more trouble in the long run. But that's the end of it is with that like convention, right? Now, just kind of a preview here, like saying just we can do, almost do this real quick, actually, in a way, so which is really good. Give me three minutes here. Now, you know what he does like internally? He passes the Alien and Sedition Acts, and there's four parts to it. You had to know so much of the whole four parts, okay? One part is the Naturalization Act. Now, to become a citizen, you have to be over here 14 years instead of five. You had the Alien Friendly Act and the Alien Enemies Act, meaning that, like, you know, if, you know, if, uh, you know, you're over here in America, and we think you're kind of aiding, like, you know, the French or enemies, you can be deported. We can send you out. And what is sedition? What is really you doing openly in sedition? Yes. Well, but what are you doing, like, to be seditious? You're going against the government. You're being treasonous. You're aiding actively kind of. Uh, you know, uh, supporting the enemy countries that we're at war with or in conflict with through 
speeches or the newspaper. So that, and it's really going against the First Amendment. And you know, Jefferson and Madison are like, oh, they're frothing at the mouth over this because it seems like a clear violation of the First Amendment. Yes, Gwen. That's what I'm going to end up in the last minute here. Thank you. You're already looking ahead here because you guys, you know, studied this before. Like I said, what's the answer? And the answer is, is the response is between Jefferson and Madison is that Virginia and Kentucky resolutions. But I'm going to be, I'm telling you, this is something that you're going to learn that I think I'm going to go a little bit deeper than, than, than just saying, what did it say, basically? Jefferson wrote it for Kentucky, like I say, Madison for Virginia. And Virginia and Kentucky do not pass the road. They just write these things up in secret and advise and kind of like to them what to do. What are they trying to say about the Alien Sedition Act? What can a state do? Uh, What's the word? Nullify. Nullify. And that's the key thing, because again, we're fighting the Civil War really since the inception of this country. All right. Now, I'm wanna, you need to write this down here. They base this on the compact theory, C O M P A C T, that the Constitution is a compact between the federal government and the states. Like, Mr. Price, why would you emphasize this? And why are you kind of like getting, like, you know, inflecting in your voice? Because. It's the Civil War. It's what John C. Calhoun is going to be basing his secession arguments in the tariff for abominations and his, you know, his Southern exposition there. So, and don't worry, like, again, a nullification exposition in the 1820s. It always goes back to Jefferson and Madison and this kind of compact theory that you can nullify laws and disagreement between the states and the federal government. So important to Virginia and Kentucky resolution in that context. Done.